Hello, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today, I'm thrilled to take you on a journey through a comedy film called No Hard Feelings. Before we delve in, I kindly request you to subscribe to our channel and show your appreciation by hitting the like button. If you haven't watched it yet, be warned that spoilers lie ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie commences with Gary, a tow truck operator, arriving at Maddie Barker's residence to repossess her vehicle. Maddie emerges from her house and attempts to appeal to Gary's emotions as they had been in a past romantic relationship until she abruptly cut off contact. Her endeavors are thwarted by another man she had a casual encounter with the previous night who appears in his underwear and makes inappropriate advances towards her. Despite Maddie's protests, Gary tows away the car given that Maddie is an Uber driver. Maddie employs rollerblades to catch up with Gary and halts when he endeavors to purchase breakfast. She endeavors to lower the car and drive away, but the vehicle remains attached to the truck. In a clumsy attempt, she tries to disengage the car until Gary raises it back up. Maddie faces probationary consequences due to her actions. Additionally, she receives notice of a substantial amount owed in back taxes, putting her house ownership in jeopardy. In Montauk, where she has spent her entire life, Maddie also holds a position as a bartender by the waterside. She collaborates with her companion Sarah and spends time with both her and her spouse Jim. Maddie's employer remarks on her confrontational demeanor when she engages in a dispute with a patron who seeks to order a drink before the bar's official opening. During their break, Sarah presents Maddie with a job advertisement from an affluent family seeking a companion for their son before he departs for college. In return, they offer a Buick Regal as compensation. Maddie comprehends that companion implies a sexual relationship, but she decides to acquiesce because she finds herself without alternatives, and she aims to exploit the wealthy as they are responsible for her potential loss of home. Maddie reaches the Becker family's residence and encounters the parents, Laird and Allison. They engage in a conversation about their son Percy, who is scheduled to commence studies at Princeton in the upcoming autumn. However, Percy is notably awkward and introverted, lacking friends and spending his days engrossed in video games within the confines of his room. Although they were initially hoping for a candidate closer in age to Percy, Maddie persuades them that she is the suitable person for the role. Nevertheless, Laird and Allison stress that Percy must remain unaware of their arrangement. Laird and Allison instruct Maddie to locate Percy at a dog shelter where he works. Donning a fitted dress, she attempts to allure him, feigning an interest in adopting a dog. Percy introduces her to a former police dog named Milo, who was discharged from duty due to cocaine addiction. Maddie's assertiveness makes Percy uncomfortable, prompting him to consider an early departure. However, Maddie offers him a ride home using Jim's van. Upon arriving at her place, Percy reacts by using mace on her, causing her discomfort. Maddie clarifies that she found him attractive, which leads Percy to express a desire for a genuine date. Maddie agrees to the proposition. Subsequently, Maddie returns Jim's van and labels Percy as unappealing in her account to Jim and Sarah. Maddie brings Percy to a bar where she has an acquaintance among the waitstaff and orders a Long Island iced tea for him, although it turns out he dislikes the drink. Another individual named Travis appears, revealing that he was once romantically involved with Maddie. Displaying his wedding ring, he asserts that Maddie ending their relationship was a positive turn of events and cautions Percy against becoming too attached to her. Later on, Maddie accompanies Percy to the shoreline for a session of swimming without clothes. Although he hesitates, Maddie encourages him to participate. In a brief span, three intoxicated adolescents arrive and abscond with their garments, containing wallets, cell phones, and keys. Consequently, Maddie emerges from the water in a state of complete undress and confronts all three teenagers to regain their belongings. Following a struggle, she prevails and retrieves their possessions. Upon returning to the water, Percy remarks on her behavior, implying something amiss. This prompts Maddie to contemplate departing. However, Percy, still unclothed, insists on reclaiming his phone. In response, he mounts the hood of Maddie's vehicle. Unperturbed, she accelerates, 
prompting a daring drive with Percy clinging to the hood. The police notice and initiate a pursuit. Fearing potential repercussions for her driver's license, Maddie accelerates further and expertly navigates a railroad crossing ahead of an approaching train, resulting in the police losing track of them. In a renewed effort to allure Percy, Maddie escorts him to her residence. She endeavors to perform an alluring dance before him, prompting him to reciprocate. However, her plans take a turn when she notices a rash on his back, an issue he links to his feelings of unease. He begins to talk about his past, including how his friends teased him for sleeping in his parents' bedroom and making up stories that he was having sex with them, which is why he doesn't want to go out, as Maddie rubs lotion on his back. Maddie shares an awkward memory with Percy. Maddie receives a visit from her ex-classmate Do Khan, who has become a realtor and is interested in selling her house at its full price. Maddie rejects his offer, determined to continue her efforts to save the house. Percy invites Maddie to have a genuine date, and she happily accepts. They enjoy their time at an arcade, winning prizes until they are asked to leave due to Maddie playfully teasing another child. They visit the lighthouse, where Percy musters the courage to ask Maddie for a kiss. She agrees, and though Percy is a bit awkward, they share the moment. During their conversation, Maddie reveals that she has never left Montauk and has continued to reside in her family home with her mother. She explains that her father provided them with the house and some money to ensure they wouldn't disrupt his new family's life. Subsequently, they pay a visit to Jody, Percy's former male nanny. Jody's intuition picks up on an unusual atmosphere around Maddie, but she retorts playfully, teasing him about the peculiarity of a grown man working as a nanny for a teenage boy. At a later time, Maddie and Percy embark on a dinner experience at an upscale restaurant, creating their own version of a prom date to compensate for missing their respective proms. Discovering Percy's piano playing skills during their conversation, Maddie persuades him to showcase his talent. With newfound confidence, he takes the stage performing the song Maneater. The entire restaurant becomes their audience, and his performance elicits cheers and applause. Equally taken aback, Maddie finds herself impressed as well. A fellow student named Natalie approaches Percy, extending her admiration for his performance and revealing her own plans to attend Princeton in the upcoming autumn. Natalie extends an invitation to Percy for a gathering intended for future Princeton attendees. In response, Maddie attempts to dissuade him from attending, expressing concerns that he might become involved intimately with Natalie or another young woman. Despite Maddie's reservations, Percy asserts his desire to attend the event. Arriving at the party in a limousine, Maddie begins her search for Percy, navigating through a crowd of pretentious adolescents who consider her presence incongruous due to her age. After a determined quest, Maddie locates Percy in a compromised state, lying beside Natalie. However, Percy's condition is far from well. He's unwell due to alcohol consumption and an intake of ibuprofen. Maddie takes it upon herself to assist him in inducing vomiting. Their efforts are interrupted when the host's parents enter the scene and instruct Maddie to depart. In an effort to protect her, Percy accidentally punches Maddie in the throat. After they go, Percy declares that he is prepared to have sex with Maddie in the limo, but when he confesses his love to her, she sees he is too inebriated and declines to comply. Laird and Allison observe Percy's increased enthusiasm and sociability, qualities he ascribes to his recent romantic relationship. Nonetheless, Percy confides in them that he has altered his plans and decided against attending Princeton, opting instead to remain in close proximity to Maddie. A call is placed by Allison to Maddie, who is now wrestling with reservations regarding her commitment to the job. Laird assures Maddie that she can retain possession of the car without maintaining the relationship as a means to prevent Percy from relinquishing his plans for Princeton. Regrettably, Percy is situated within his parents' vehicle and inadvertently triggers the audio system, inadvertently tuning into their conversation. In this unintended eavesdropping, he catches wind of Maddie's desire to retain the car without the necessity of an intimate relationship, leaving him deeply saddened. Inviting Maddie over for lunch as a means of her meeting his parents, Percy proceeds to indulge in their wine selection and adopts a passive, aggressive demeanor. Subsequently, 
he joins forces with his colleague Crispin to enact a plan involving the Buick. Venturing into the woods, they tamper with the vehicle, placing a rock onto the gas pedal and orchestrating a collision with a tree that results in the tree collapsing onto the car. In order to get things over with, Percy and Maddie decide to have sex when he gets back to the house. However, before he can even get inside her, he ejaculates on her thigh. He claims to be well-informed and to no longer be interested in seeing Maddie, predicting that she will eventually spend the rest of her days in Montauk. At a later point, Gary delivers the battered Buick to Maddie, given that her name is listed on the documents. Consequently, she finds herself compelled to continue her Uber responsibilities using her dilapidated vehicle, while Percy retreats to his room, engrossed in video games, and remains unresponsive to Maddie's texts and calls. Once Maddie eventually accumulates sufficient funds to repair her car and settle her taxes, she joins Jim and Sarah in a celebratory moment. Yet, their elation is tempered by Jim and Sarah's announcement of their imminent relocation to Florida, driven by the impending arrival of their baby. Overwhelmed with disappointment, Maddie comes to the realization that she is destined to confront solitude. Subsequently, Maddie gets in touch with Doe and elects to accept his proposition to facilitate the sale of her house. She transfers ownership to Jim and Sarah, allowing them to establish a home for raising their baby, and concurrently, she initiates preparations for her own relocation to California. Discovering Percy's presence at a Princeton gathering, Maddie takes it upon herself to locate him. However, he persists in his silence, remaining unresponsive as she endeavors to clarify her situation. In a mirror image of his past action, she positions herself atop the hood of his vehicle, but he speeds away with her gripping on. Their impromptu journey leads them along a shoreline where Maddie becomes inadvertently engulfed in flames from a barbecue grill. The escapade culminates with Percy plunging the car into the water. Overwhelmed by panic, he frantically searches for Maddie until they both exchange tearful apologies. Following their reconciliation, Maddie discloses her intention to relocate to California, a decision that Percy wholeheartedly supports. He also assures her that, despite circumstances, he considers their intimate experience as a significant milestone in his life. On the day earmarked for his departure to Princeton, Percy readies his luggage and bids adieu to Laird and Allison. Maddie makes an unexpected appearance, poised to chauffeur him to his destination before embarking on her journey to California. To Percy's astonishment, she unveils a surprise. The inclusion of Milo, a new addition to her life. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to share your thoughts and favorite moments from the movie in the comments below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on exciting movie recaps like this one. Do you want to keep the entertainment going? Check out this related video to see more of this and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.